Who do you know that doesn't like music? No, deaf people don't count. Well, but seriously, it plays such a huge part in our lives that we really can't deny its importance. From our first steps to the final ones we take, music surrounds us, fills us, and evolves with us. It is even known that late-stage Alzheimer's patients, even after seemingly forgetting everything, can still be found humming their favorite songs, as musical memory exists in an untouched part of the brain. It then comes at a strange surprise that the same generation of boomers just so happen to hate the most of it. Of course, every demographic has its purists, but we call them old heads in this context for a reason. Now, let's not be too hostile because, in a way, they do deserve our respect. To have aged to the point where you're no less picky than I was in elementary school is a pretty interesting feat to accomplish. It seems the more time we spend on Earth, the more it becomes significantly easier to tell exactly what you like and dislike. With opinions forming left and right for just about everything in the world, it's with great urgency that even with the lack of enjoyment, contemporary art still deserves as much respect as its predecessors. Now, I won't deny that musical history was filled with highly seminal works, such as OK Computer in 97, Dark Side of the Moon in 73, Let It Be in 1970, or even Kind of Blue in 59. The fact that these works can be almost instantly recognized without knowing any of the artist's name is a true testament to how groundbreaking they are. On the other hand, though, the post-2000s musical era we're currently living in will also play a huge part in history, just as much as the olden days. Hell, the highest ranked album of all time on Rate Your Music is To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar, a jazz and funk-influenced album that came out only seven years ago, in 2016. It is even now regarded as a masterpiece and a cultural benchmark, just proving how strong our newer generations truly are. An album so good, even its b-sides are critically acclaimed. Forward to 2019, rapper Tyler the Creator chose to reinvent his entire sound with the album Igor. Coming from the hardcore horror-tinged hip-hop albums of his youth to a complete 180-degree turn of a neo-soul record all about love and heartbreak. He even went on to win the Best Rap Album category at the 2020 Grammys later getting called out by Tyler himself during his speech, because if anyone actually listened to the album, they would realize it isn't really a rap one. This is all why it's completely unfair to dismiss the entirety of specific genres. Perhaps all of today's music doesn't suck, but your generalization certainly does. Of course, I'm very much aware that someone's character isn't entirely dependent on their music taste, nor is it really affected by it. But their approach to the art can really tell us a lot about their point of view. I doubt that whoever says they don't like contemporary music has heard every single song for the past 20 years or so, because it's physically impossible. I think it's also impossible to hate every single new song to come out. I mean, there at least has to be something for everyone, right? Right? Especially with the number of genre revivals we've had recently, disco being a major one of them. Whether it be from someone who exclusively listens to music in the car, or simply lacks the passion for any exploration, a lot of complaints about today's music are actually just towards their false pretense of it. It's a simple fact that the radio is not a reflection of true musical culture, but rather a mainstream one. This is why I ask those who base their entire perception of the musical landscape based on the same five songs they hear every day on the radio, do you hate our generation's music or the music your generation thinks we like? Because no matter what is the current trend, there will always be people pushing back. It happened with heavy metal through the satanic panic, and now it's happening with trap, with many old heads dismissing this highly influential genre. Many people who do partake in today's music will instead dismiss the genre of pop. I mean, since the term is very broad, encompassing tons of subcategories and even originating back in the 1920s, it's completely unjustified to hate the whole. Yes, yes, Beyonce does not sound at all like the Beatles, but they can both be classified under that same term which makes generalized statements such as pop music sucks completely unfair and only makes you seem like a bitter old man who does not like ice cream next to his steak dinner because there's too many flavors of ice cream, even if the steak in question can be prepared in so many different ways he might have never even known. In conclusion, contemporary music is an art form that serves to evolve and push the sounds set by its predecessors. We experience pushback for every mainstream innovation, even blaming the genre of pop for the repetition of similar sounding songs we hear on the radio. This leads to the souring of many older people's perceptions of music, 
providing them even more social ammunition for this constant generational diatribe. With the millions of songs uploaded every year and the lack of musical inspiration, it's safe to say that today's music doesn't suck, but you do.